Um, Gaza was a little, I, you know, I'd never seen where the tunnels, I'd never seen the tunnel part as much as I did this time. I didn't go to any tunnels, but I drove by them. And when you go through uh, the Rafah Gate from Rafah, Egypt to Rafah, Gaza, and you, you get on the other side, you see all these little half, um, you know, buildings, half circular buildings. And they're like huts, and uh, that's where the tunnels emerge up into. And uh, I didn't know they were so specialized. There's like tobacco tunnels. There's livestock tunnels. There's uh, electronic goods tunnels. And then there's even people tunnels. So, and I, I didn't know these, the, the, the Hamas figures there, and even some individuals, have private tunnels. They're not stepping over sheep. Uh, material, you know, leavings. <laughs> they got their own little tunnel they go through, and 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 uh, so I didn't quite. I mean, I knew there were tunnels, but to see it that way and to see how, I, I mean, I thought that they would be all really secret and nobody would really know. Right? But, Did they know. show you this is a weapons tunnel, or those are probably the Hamas ones? Well, or? they showed me the commercial tunnels. Okay. But they didn't show me this is a <laughs> weapons tunnel. They, they and but I'm sure you know weapons go through there. But but what they but the thing that struck me, and what the United Nations people showed me is this these commercial tunnels, and uh, and I didn't go to the other tunnels. So but I but I, they told me that they existed, um, and so you know that's that was that. But I just was surprised at that because these tunnels are just there's over they got to be over a thousand of them, you know, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of wonder. I mean, you can get anything in Gaza you want. You just can't get it in large quantities and you can't get it at, at the prices that you would get it at other places. So like a case of, like uh like a case of popping if you sold it, you know, other places, you know, it might be eight dollars up for, you know, however much. That would be triple in Gaza, you know. Uh and then also another thing people told me about Gaza is if you buy a generator, you know, if you you know, 'cause the 'cause the energy is very sporadic if you buy a generator, you know, there's no warranties. You know, so like if you're in the West Bank or if you're in Israel or if you're in Jordan or anywhere and, you know, your your generator blows up, you can sue somebody. This thing is as is, you know, and you just deal with it. So a lot of the lower quality goods come through those tunnels too. And the tunnels are, tunnel usage is expensive. You know, I talked to one guy who was an entrepreneur who said he used to use the tunnels but he can't anymore because it's just too much money. Hmm. So, um, you know, Hamas is actually makes, they charge money for the building permit to build the tunnels and to use of the tunnels. Did the people that you were talking to uh, criticize Hamas, talk about what Hamas is doing, or relate sort of their experiences at all to, to Hamas's that? role in the government? Uh, you know, so the young people I talked to in, 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 uh, in Gaza all told me that they didn't like Hamas, you know, but they also said that, uh, you know, uh, they, they weren't too hard on them, but they said they didn't like them and they didn't want to be part of their group. Um, they mostly, you know, wanted to talk about, you know, their, what are they going to do? If they're getting this education, because they all were going to the Islamic University, because uh, that's one of the only games in town. But they were, they were all saying that they, that what were they going to do when they got out of school? You know, they were kind of wondering that. And they, and, uh, you know, they, did, they didn't have a strong, I'll tell you, leaving the issue of Hamas alone for a minute, what did strike me about them is they didn't seem to have much knowledge about the hell and damage that the rocketing causes on the other side of the border. They didn't seem to, they were like, well, isn't it just like little pop bottle rockets? Or, I mean, I think they actually used the word bottle rockets, you know. They didn't see, they don't think they, they didn't seem to know how much, Damage is being inflicted over there, and how much terror is being inflicted over there. Um, and when I asked them, do you all know any Israelis? None of them did, except for one. And that one met one when she went to Texas on like a year abroad. So hmm. she, she, she had to go all the way to... And one of them had met one briefly some other time. But the only one who actually actually got to know one. A person from Israel was was when that one kid went to Texas. So, and it's shocking because I was in Starot the day before I got to G Gaza, 
And you, you know, obviously everybody knows uh, you could stand in in the road and look right straight into uh, into Gaza. So um, you know, if it, on a good day, you know, you could probably throw a rock in there. You know, it's that close. You know, and uh, yet the kids don't don't know any don't really know any Israelis. And a lot of older people knew. Like for example, people in their forties and fifties, they they had known Israelis because they used to work there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I it just it threw a chill through me. Talking to these young people who didn't who who didn't know any, because I mean, how do myths about people that crop up when you don't know them, you know? So I I, look, I hope we can find ways to promote interaction. I think it'd be good. Mm -hmm. I know Bet Selim has tried to do this video camera thing where they're sharing video so they can sort of get to try to get to know try to build familiarity that way, mm -hmm. you know.